In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Begin by reading Luke chapter 13, 10 to 17. This is about knowing better than God. God was there, in the synagogue. God sees a woman. Difficult to see. Should have been behind a screen, probably somewhere else. Maybe upstairs, but certainly at the back of the synagogue, away from all the men. She didn't need to be there, but she had come. She herself wanted to see this person who could be the Messiah. And she was having difficulty seeing because she was all bent down. She could only look at the ground. And the Lord brings her forward. He lays his hands on her. He heals her and she stands up straight and praises God. Fine. But there's somebody there who knows much better than God. And that is the rule of the synagogue. A bit like somebody like me, the person in charge of the church, who knows all the rules, all the regulations, exactly what you should and should not do, and when you should and shouldn't do it. And that person says, because he's outraged, don't you know you're not meant to work on the Sabbath? There are six days when you can be healed. Why come on the Sabbath? You see the way he knows better than God? But on the seventh day, God made everything perfect. He had seen it as all perfect. And now he made one other thing, and that was he made rest. And he made it so that people should be enjoying their completeness, their absolute wholeness and perfection in a beautiful and perfect environment. And the Lord had seen the imperfection in the environment in this lady, and he had made her stand upright. So there is somebody there who knows better than God, the ruler of the synagogue. So frequently we can be a bit like that too, can't we? We know the exact way we ought to be fasting. So we look very carefully indeed at the back of the margarine. <gasps> oh no, this margarine here has got the tiniest bit of whey in it. Can't eat that. You must buy the really expensive margarine that has no whey in it. <gasps> oh my goodness. You must throw away this cake that somebody gave you because it might have been made with eggs. You don't know, and you might, you might break your fast. So the kindness that somebody did must be just thrown away. Chuck it out. What nonsense. Because in the end, our fasting, our prayers, everything else, are there to make us more complete. And sometimes we have to break the rules do things that are simply not there, that everybody who knows what's what will be outraged by. Because in a very real sense, with Christ, there are no rules. With the resurrection, everything got bust apart. Everything became shocking. Nothing was like it used to be. <laughs> if you follow the rules, the rules say that God can't become a human being. If you follow the rules, the God says virgins can't give birth. If you follow the rules, dead men lie in the tombs, they don't get out. If you follow the rules, God cannot ascend in bodily form into heaven. If you follow the rules. But if you follow Christ, you have a freedom in Christ. And that freedom brings you wholeness like that lady in the synagogue all that time ago, but not like the man who knew exactly what he ought to be doing. Your prayers. God bless you. Amen.